please turn your Bibles to St. John, chapter 13, verse 27. And after the sop, Satan entered in the end. I plead with you, do not let Satan enter into your heart. Amen, somebody. Mm -hmm. You're sorry for me. You, you foolishly do that. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest do quickly. Jesus knew what was going on, and Judas knew what was going on. But nobody else did. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. For some of them thought because Judas had the bag that Jesus had said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. And it was night. Out of the light, into the night. Holy Father God, we love you because you first loved us. And I thank you that you have faced that kind of love in our hearts by your grace and that we can even fix our mouths to say that for we could not even begin to say something like that before we got saved we thank you for salvation full and free through your holy son the lord jesus christ by your grace your mercy and your loving kindness and we pray that you forgive us and cleanse us of all sin in our lives, that all of us can be fit for your use, not only to preach your holy word, but to pray about the preaching of your holy word, and to hear your holy word, and then to do it. Lord, we pray that you would demonstrate the anointing, the unction, the freedom, the power of your blessed Holy Spirit, and that your Holy Spirit would penetrate wicked hearts, that Satan would not enter into people's hearts, but that your Holy Spirit would enter into their hearts and convict them of their wicked, evil, and ungodly sins, their adultery, their fornication, their lying, their drunkenness, their pride, their rebelliousness, their stubbornness, their meanness. And Lord, break their hard hearts and open their blinded eyes and stop their deaf ears and save their souls as only you can. Demonstrate the power of your Holy Spirit. Glorify your Holy Name. Bring out your Holy Word to our hearts. Change Christians. Revive Christians. Help them to get back. Help us all to get back to your first, our first love. For that is genuine revival. And then we we'll save those who are lost. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And for his sake, those who have gone to the brink of Judas town uh, by the power of your Holy Spirit snatch them back before they fall off into hell. In Jesus Christ's name we pray for our sake. Amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, J.C. Ryle Said a man may preach from false motives, write books, and make fine speeches, and seem diligent in good works, and yet be a Judas Iscariot. Amen, somebody? Mm -hmm. Don't get bamboozled, don't get fooled by people who looked apart because the disciples 
didn't have a clue that Judas was a traitor. Beloved, in our passage tonight, we come to what has been called by some the most frightening statement in the Bible. After Jesus states plainly that he will be betrayed by one of his own, just like Lucifer betrayed God, Peter gets John to ask Jesus directly, Who is it? Jesus identifies Judas by giving him a sock of bread dipped in some kind of gravy in the manner in which a host might give to an honored guest as I explained to you last night. John who emphasized the love of Christ more than any of the other gospel writers must have been somewhat confused by what is clearly a mixed signal. Again, they had no clue that Judas, the treasurer, the finance man of the ministry, everybody knows you got to be a man of high integrity and character if you're going to handle the money, and you're going to count the money, and you're going to hold the bag, and you're going to sign the checks for the rituals, for the food, for the things that we need for the ministry. Above everybody else, You've got to be a trusted individual. Amen, somebody. Mm -hmm. This was an act of friendship to identify a betrayer. My God, my God. What kind of love is this? We read that after the sock, Satan entered into Judas. Judas had previously conspired with the Jewish religious leaders to betray Jesus and now Satan took hold of him. Let me share with you how this happens. You already made up your mind to do something evil something dark in the black and dark night. It's been, the devil been dealing with you for some weeks, yea, even some months, some years. And then you do that duping the light act. You're so wicked in your heart that when your friend does the nicest thing for you, that's when and you and you you don't take heed to that, and that demonic duping the light grin comes over your face that comes from your wicked heart. And that's when Satan enters into your heart, right? Because you're going to persist and betray innocent blood, Danny. Anyway, my God, my God, know you're wrong, but determined to do this plot, determined to do this evil, determined your mind is made up. And then when they do the most blessed thing for you, and you don't break down and apologize, you don't break down and admit the whole scheme, you don't break down and get it right. Right then and there, Satan's got your heart right there. Satan took hold of him, using him as a tool, played him like a piano, to carry out this evil, demonic, most hideous plot of all time. Benedict Arnold was a Sunday school child compared to Judas. The only reason why Satan 
entered into Judas is because Judas allowed it. We are all free moral agents. Mm -hmm. Allow that devil to grab hold of your heart to do that evil, to do that wickedness. Judas could have said no. The lady said one time she loved committing adultery with another man, uh, with another woman's husband, because she knew that it was wrong. One president said, I did it because I could. With arrogant, duping the light grin from hell. Those of you who don't know what the duping the light grin is, is, is a psychological term. Where your heart is evil and then you try to hide it, but it comes through your face and you start grinning for no reason at all, like the devil from hell. Judas could have said no, but he did. Alexander McLaren said two things appealed to Judas at this moment. One, if you will, the conviction that he was discovered he was found out. Jesus had his number. The gig was up. The other, the wonderful assurance that he was still loved for the gift of the morsel was a token of friendliness. My God, my God, what kind of love is this? He shut his heart against them both, and as he shut his heart against Christ, he opened it to the devil. And so many thousands have followed Judas down to the years, forsaking Jesus, forsaking Christ, forsaking the church, forsaking the word of God that they were raised up on. They know what God's word said, yet they turn and run away from it, to live a life of pain and misery and heartache and trouble. For the way of the transgressor is hard. Amen, somebody? Amen. Jesus, who knew all things, knew that Satan had entered into Judas's heart at that moment. That moment of love. That moment of friendship. That moment of my reaching out to you. Hoping that you would repent. And say no to the devil. Jesus said to him, Okay, that thou doest, do quickly, Judas, because I already know your plot. What you're going to do, do it quickly. Matthew's Gospel, we know that Judas knew that Jesus knew what he was about to do. As the disciples were wondering among themselves who the betrayer would be, Judas quietly asked Jesus, Master, is it I? My God, my God, what kind of love is this? And Jesus responded by saying, Thou hast said. Perhaps the reason why Jesus told Judas to act quickly is because 
he knew at, la at last that all hope for him to change his course was gone. We don't know. This is deep stuff here, folk. This is serious stuff here. While Jesus knew what Judas was planning, Judas still had the other disciples completely bamboozled. Food. Dude. Run them up. We read in the next verse, Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, he had the money, that Jesus had said unto him, Go and buy those things that we have need of against the feast. Notice, there's no record of Judas giving the money back to the ministry, even though he knew he was getting ready to betray the master, Jesus. He kept the money. I told you the other night, what this is about is Jesus knew all about Judas, and Judas was all about the money like so many Christians are today. He was about the money. His little G, God, was the money. Judas was the original one who said, show me the money. Show me the money. I've seen this Jesus. I've seen what he can do. Uh, but I got to have the money. We got some folk like that in the church today. They love money more than they love God. Amen, somebody? Amen, Amen. Amen lights. The disciples thought Judas was going to do something good, but they were sorely mistaken. Totally, completely fooled for three and a half years. Judas was a, a grand imposter, a master masquerader, like some folk in the church today. Discerning people can see right through that little wicked, duping the light smile. See right through that, how you doing? Oh, blessing, how the favor? The loudest ones, the loudest ones with all the terminology that are right, you gotta watch them. And then you gotta watch them quiet ones too. Oh, yes, you do. Over in the corner. In the beginning of the movie Star Trek, into darkness. You say, Preacher, I, I, I never thought you would watch a movie called Star Trek. I don't. My son put this in here. I have no clue what he's talking about. I am not a Trekkie. Now, I do have a pastor friend who's older than I am who is a Trekkie. <laughs> Loves Star Trek to death. He won't admit it, but I think he went out to the Star Trek, whatever it was, and put on a costume. <laughs> but love God. He loved God. He loved God. Anyway, the movie Star Trek Into Darkness, the city of London is bombed, and Starfleet headquarters is attacked, prompting the crew of the Starship Enterprise to rush off on a mission to find the perpetrator. Following what they believe are accurate clues, they travel to a distant planet only to discover that the real enemy, their own commander in chief, is back on Earth. My, my, my. And a race from another, a plotting rather, back on Earth, plotting to start a war between Earth and a race from another planet. 
as the crew of the Enterprise rushed back to confront the commander. They discover that he has sabotaged their ship by placing torpedoes on it, intending for them all to be killed in space. See, this is the reason why I don't look at Star Trek. This is devilish stuff. <laughs> Wicked stuff. It's ungodly. A person they thought they could trust and rely on someone they thought was one of the good guys by my mind. Turned out to be the one trying to take them down, one of the bad guys. That's Judas for me. When Judas left the upper room, he left the light and went into the night. The disciples thought he was still one of the good guys. By this time, with Satan in his heart, he was too far gone to turn back. My, my, my. Look, the Bible says, he then, having received the salt, went immediately out into the night, and it was night. Why would John put that in there? It was night. Because he wants to point out that Judas left the light of the world and went into darkness with Satan. My God, my God, what kind of love is this? To know that this man was a devil, or he had a devil, all this time. And give him a position of authority. To wash his feet. Put him in a seat of honor. This is why I tell parents of rebellious teenagers, stop trying to appease these rebellious, stubborn children, teenagers. They will take your kindness and your love and mop the floor with them. Love them, but get in their face and rebuke them too. Punish them, chastise them. Don't let them have their way. Because that spirit of rebelliousness and stubbornness, yea, that spirit of Judas, so many parents have been betrayed by their children. And sadly, so many children have been betrayed by their parents. And I don't think that uh, kind of betrayal, parent to a child, very easy to recover from. So by the grace of God, be the parent that God wants you to be and be the teenager that God wants you to be. And that's free. You can imagine Judas leaving behind the brightly lit room. More importantly, the brightly lit Jesus, the light of the world. Where they were eating, supper, fellowshipping, with the light of the world and stepping out into the gathering room with darkness in the sky and darkness in the heart of Jesus. Dear friend of mine, you may never imagine yourself doing anything as hideous as Judas did 2,000 years ago. But if you continue to reject Christ, you can become so hard-hearted, so hard-headed, so uh, stiff-necked that the loving gestures that God and Jesus offer to you have no effect. You have a reprobate mind on your soul. The longer you put off trust in Christ as Savior, the harder it will be for you to make that decision the next time around. One day you may walk away from the light into the night like Judas did and go into hell the darkness of hell fell. so beloved I urge you not to go down the same path that Judas walked trust Christ as your Savior tonight by the grace of God 
by first accepting the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's law. For the Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Second, accept the fact, that, dear friend, that there is a penalty for sin. The Bible states in Romans 3, or 6, 23, rather, for the wages of sin is death. We die physically because of sin. We die spiritually because of sin. And we go to hell. So thirdly, accept the fact that you are on the road to hell tonight. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Sin, death, hell, that's bad news. But I have some good news for you. It's found in John 3, 16. Jesus Christ said himself, For God so loved the world that includes you, that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, perish where in hell, but have everlasting life in heaven with God. So just believe in your heart tonight in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. And pray and ask him to save you, for the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou and you shalt be saved. Verse 13 says, For whosoever, that's an old English word, whosoever that means anybody at any time shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. So would you trust Christ as Savior tonight and not be like Judas? Believe in your heart tonight that Jesus Christ died for you, was buried and rose again, and pray and ask him to save you, and I will help you with the prayer. Just repeat after me right where you are. And mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I realize that I am a sinner and that I have committed many sins against you. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart, the best way that I know how, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. He paid my sin debt. Was buried and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to repent of my sins past. And to follow you in a new life. All the way to heaven. Because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. For it is in his name I pray, and for his sake, amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again, and you pray that prayer with me, you meant it from your heart. May I say to you, congratulations on making the right decision. But you've done the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospelightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door by me if any man enter in. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. He shall go in and out and find pasture. 